In order to properly appreciate the full-sized Svord von Temsky and its smaller Ranger cousin, the one in this video, a five-minute reading of the Gustavus von Temsky Wikipedia page might be in order. Wikipedia, we know, is the unnamed source behind 98% of all claims by people who have, quote, done a lot of research on the subject when they talk over someone else. Or if Wikipedia is too much, at least, you know, read the copy-paste wiki media light story on basically every web store that sells this knife, and that should work. Well, the story goes, or claims, the knife was used for fighting, pig sticking, chopping wood, brush clearing, digging defensive positions, serious portraits with frowny faces, and stabbing the doors of horse-drawn carriages way back in the 1800s. They must have been filming proof videos. One frame at a time, of course. If Von Temsky hadn't died at the tender age of 40 by a bullet in the head, fighting what he knew to be in an overly fortified defensive position held by New Zealand cannibals, he might be proud of the Svord Von Temsky made by New Zealand knife maker Svord. Either that or he may try to sue them for intellectual property infringement. Maybe not. We might assume back then knife IP disputes were handled with hand-to-hand -hand combat instead of the court of law, even though Jack's social media stars nowadays may suggest otherwise. Or maybe the world had different things to fight over than how this fucking knife kind of looks like that fucking knife because in the end you know they're all fucking knives. But before we talk any further about knife IP laws and how damn mad it makes us when the, the, someone makes a knife that looks like our favorite knife company's tactic. <clears throat> Let's look at the dimensions, like the overall length and weight, with and without the sheath. Are we down to patenting shades of purple yet? The blade length and the pig sticking edge. Can I patent the idea of patenting the color purple? Sorry, sorry, I mean the shade of purple. Handle size, grip area. Is jimping pitch patented yet? It has to be right if people want to justify charging high-end power tool prices for pocket knives nowadays. Spine thickness and handle thickness. I would patent these two measurements just to be a dick, if, if you could. This guy's a dick. Tallness is... The $170 Von Temsky Ranger the smaller, more feeble of the two Temsky Sford Bowies features a 6-inch clip-point blade style made from a Buick's worth of Swedish L6 carbon steel. If my grandpa was still alive, he would have laughed at that one, but probably not watched YouTube. Carbon steel, of course, could rust if you don't regularly wipe it down with some oil, and probably is not the type of steel in a Buick, is what someone will point out in the comments. I use a 3-in-1 oil because that's what's sitting on my workbench, although Someone else in the comments will point out they use a different, better oil. 3-in-1 kind of stinks, though, and some people say mineral oil is good, too. Some people. The grind on the Ranger knife is convex, at least the edge grind. So I couldn't really measure a behind the edge. I mean, it kind of looks like there's an edge bevel, but it's more rounded than that. So there's not really a clear-cut line. The knife has been ground by hand, so the swedge isn't symmetrical up top, and there is unevenness in the blade finish. Now, I don't say these as bad things, but if you're the type of dude who shits on the quality control of Benchmade for having an off-centered blade, despite functioning very adequately as a pocket knife, then you may want to be aware of this. It reminds me of the grind and blade finish on the Aranyuk choppers that I have, which are only about 30 to 50 bucks. <coughs> Cheap labor! The blade is super sharp, though, and I'd surmise the amount of steel behind the edge would make it hold up well to whacking. Which, of course, were gonna find out. The handle, it's a primitive design but it's functional. There are holes in the cross guard noted in the product description to make it easier to mount to a stick. Okay, a spear, huh? The knife has a full tang and there are wood scales covering it. Then there's a lanyard hole in the back for your $80 titanium and copper combat bead. There's not much to the handle, it's not slick, and the grain provides kind of traction for your hands, the wood grain. It feels like you're holding a sword. It fits my hand well, and in one of my last few videos, someone asked me what my hand size was. I don't know the answer to that. Now, if it was an elaborate troll to do some dumb measurements, touche. But if we're looking at the way my hand grips are right now, I measure from the front of the cross guard to where my pinky sits on the handle, and that's about three and a quarter of an inch. 
the farthest place from the cross guard where my palm touches it on the back side is about three and a half inches. I like grip areas roughly three and a half inches or bigger, and this is that. The sheath. There's a $70 Svord aftermarket sheath available for this that is purported to be more historically accurate, except for the price, of course, but without a belt loop because the technology wasn't invented yet in the 1800s for belt loops. The one that comes with it is nice. I'd say I prefer it to hang lower, as we all might, but it's still a nice, well-made sheath. It's thick as shit, welted and sewn together with a Svord logo stamped on it, and there's a loop up top to keep it in the sheath when on cannibal fighting missions. The rivets up top are, let's say, rustically finished, and sort of like the rest of the knife, but it adds to the charm. The product page says the weight varies on the actual knife itself, and this is because they appear to be more man than machine. I would mean that because the people who make these knives obviously hand finish them on belt grinders and whatever the shit is that helps you make knives, like old electrical machines. And if you look at their Instagram feed and a few of their social media Facebook photos, there's a serious lack of CNC machines with keyboards. Comparisons. First, the Svord in all its hand-finished glory. I like it. It's heavy as shit and probably a thicker blade stock than it needs to be. Well, you know what? Car hoods. Never mind. But in my head, I see one of those dudes from the Instagram feed sitting in a chair in a dark shop listening to Bob Dylan in his shorts polishing one of these, hopefully not dropping it on his leg. And you know, that's what I think I want out of a knife. Now the steel wheel roamer. You know Cedric and Ada spent 40 of his Australian dollars to send me this knife just because he's a decent human being. I plan on reviewing it soon. Um, pretty comfortable handle, looks like it was made by computerized machines mostly. So, you know, if that's what your thing is, that's cool. It has an orange rubber handle, don't know how well it holds to digging up holes or prying rocks, though. Let's look at the SE Laser Strike. This is also a heavy knife, not as heavy, like a medium heavy. Also a comfortable handle, a favorite of mine. Um, Alright, you know what, let's do something reasonable, like a reasonable size that's not too heavy. The Vandegal Rover, you know I like this one. Overall it's cheaper than the other knives here, and fit and finish is pretty good. Plus it ain't scary looking, and I like the flat grind. Alright, let's see. As society moves away from starting wars with natives who resort to cannibalism because they're sick of colonialism, we demand more of the knives we use less. Makes sense. We want our knife blades to be perfectly centered for fidgeting in our office chairs or the edge of the blade opposite of the cutting edge. You know, the part that doesn't cut needs to be ground symmetrically for our Amazon packages. If they're not, we're going to complain on internet forums and social media accounts. Plus, you don't have the money for a full-time knife photo retoucher because that's Kardashian money which is not the same as IT guy money. I think these last few sentences are what that guy was talking about whose comment I posted earlier. Apparently the guy who subscribes to Prepared Mind 101, six pack abs, nothing fancy in, check in my notes here, once lost ministries, isn't a fan of the channel. Can't help but being an asshole, dear lord, but I don't want to burn in hell. You are forgiven, son. Now go troll a YouTuber on the internet and bang someone's wife. Where were we? Oh yeah, if you like perfect computer-made knives, or imperfect computer-made knives, Svords may not be for you. And if you like what you're seeing here, please subscribe to the channel by batoning that like button, or clicking that little bell down there. This knife was kindly donated to the channel by Lucas Osborne. And if you'd like to support this channel, but don't have the kind of cash laying around to buy expensive knives to donate to every asshole who starts a YouTube channel, you can buy stuff through my Amazon links below my videos, or donate a few bucks a month to my Patreon which I used to buy shit to review and fix my cameras and computer. Follow me on Instagram, give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment. Thanks for watching.